episode of I Rock Business Entrepreneur Series. Today is a special episode because I'm here in the kitchen with my mom. Yeah, she <laughs> is a business owner as well. So I thought Valentine's Day would be a perfect day to do a podcast episode with her. So there's my there's my mini me. That's what we call it. She's the mom, but she's my mini me. <laughs> so her name is Lakeisha Whitehurst, and she is a co-owner of I Rock Crafts and Confections. So hi, mom. Hi, baby. <laughs> her first podcast. She turned the whole way. Y'all saw that? <laughs> but yeah, so we're in her kitchen. If you can't tell, we're going to be decorating cookies. So for those of you watching on YouTube, you need to check us out and see the cool stuff she does. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm also going to throw in a few little special things at the end to show you some of her products and services. If you're watching, I mean, if you're listening, sorry, on the podcast, sorry we couldn't see you, but this still should be a great episode full of great tips and information. So mom, what, <laughs> what is I Rock Crafts and Confections? I Rock Cross, Crafts and Confection is a business where we, my husband and I, we create memorable gifts. I do most of baking. So I do cakes, cookies, pies. Oh my. And he does fantastic woodwork. He does wood signs that say anything you want pretty much. And his work is really good. He's even done wooden uh, utensils, wooden ornaments. He's done, he's done wooden ornaments for the holidays. So we just, uh, he is very talented in the wood department and I stay in the kitchen because that's what I do best. Okay. So we got a little bit of wood, a little bit of baking. And speaking of baking, we're going to be decorating cookies. So if you could slide me some stuff, I don't know what I'm doing guys. So it's going to look crazy, but we thought we would spend some time together, have a little bonding while this is going on. Keep my stuff. Thank you. But anywho, so yeah, so it's my mom and her husband. His name is Raymond. And yeah, he is really amazing doing all of his wood creations while she is really awesome at baking. But she also does a lot of sewing stuff too. And you didn't even tell them, what oh, are you doing? My <laughs> she book. Was, the podcast is going to be all a mess, guys. Sorry for the sound. She's whipping up frosting. But yeah, she's also a published author. What is your book called? It's called Wally's Dream. What are you doing? I don't know. I haven't given you instructions. You don't get to give me instructions. We're clients. This, you, is, this is what happens when your mom thinks she's in charge. We get to do what we want to do. This well, is that's not a the, tutorial. Oh, well, that's the. I want to do what I want to do. I can do what I want to do, guys. Okay, she can't little, tell me what to do. It's a little more stiff. I want to do okay, so I'm gonna make stuff cute for me. All right. So what did you just ask me? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what is uh, what is your book? Uh, what is the title and like what is it about? Oh, my book is the title is Wally's Dream, and it's about a giraffe who wants to be a great baker, but he is so lousy at it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me. I'm over here struggling with this frosting. So what kind of frosting is this? It's, not regular frosting. It's, a, it's royal icing. And that is a, a me, medium mild. <laughs> <laughs> now you maybe forget my words. It's a consistency is not runny enough to do what you need to do. I would use that to outline my cookies. That's she what I tell use me what it for. To do. I, this is why she baked and I do marketing because she tries to tell me what to do. I'm like, nope, I'm gonna do what I want. Okay, well, that's cool, though. Yeah, so published author, kudos to you. Yes. I like the book, and I have little kiddos, and they love it, and I think it's just a great book that teaches lots of cool lessons about, like, friendship, about, Oops. you know, not giving up. Oh, look, she made a mess, y'all. Look, she done messed up the cookie. That's what happens. Yeah, that's why, what to do. That's why I bake alone. <laughs> <laughs> Says she bakes alone. Okay, so I haven't even told my story in this podcast, but I do want to hear a little bit about your story while you pass me i want pink frosting and red frosting i don't want to share give me the pink and the red all right this is runny this is loose consistency loose consistency I... so i want to know and i want my audience to know a little bit about your story because we're so different i know we kind of look alike but we're very different so totally different. why did you get into like entrepreneurship because i know you weren't ever kind of into that like you were a nine to five chick and you know military chick so why did you get into entrepreneurship well i decided I didn't want to work nine to five anymore. I just, I took the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> I blame my husband for that. Opened my eyes. I was like, there's more out here to life. And my job was not fulfilling. Yeah. You know, and I, I found that I love crafting and that job was just taking away too much of my time that I didn't have to, to craft. So I made a plan and you know, saved my money and came out of the workforce so I could sew. 
That's actually what I came out for sewing. Really? Yeah, I, I, was, just, I was just doing. Yeah, I was just planning on sewing stuff. I wasn't getting. That was it. You ain't have no plan. She yeah. she left military, all the the benefits to sew stuff. You don't even know how to sew back. Like back then, you didn't know how to sew. Okay. She said that. Okay. Back then, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like I remember it wasn't that long ago. You were. Yeah, just, I learned how. Yeah, you asked know, me to make something. And I tried steps. it. Yeah, I tried it because I didn't know if I could sew or not. But I was I had did. A dream. That's okay. right. I had a dream, and it and it turned out well. And I really like to make people happy. That's that's what I like to do. So, yeah. and as a matter of fact, you know, you got the first thing that I yes. ever really made. I got a, what is a breastfeeding cover? Yeah, I call it a nursing cover because I don't really hear you say breasts. They're just oh, yeah, it's like they're breasts. They're breasts, yeah. and they needed to be covered. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what is it called? A, a nursing cover. A nursing cover. That's what happens when you make a little money with your stuff. It's a nursing cover. Yeah, it's a nursing so, cover. So yes, yeah, you made so, me yeah. a nursing cover, and she smiled so. Oh, her smile was so big, so ear to ear. I was like, wow, I can actually make people happy making yeah. stuff because so, i wanted to breastfeed in public oh yeah. sorry i wanted to nurse, nurse nurse in public and she couldn't find one she wanted she made me go with her to all these stores to do her registry oh. and she couldn't find anything she wanted so she said why don't you just make me one it's like because i don't know how to sew yeah that's and, so and cool. then what's the line you use on me i believe in you <laughs> yeah so i, I had to go that. home and try it and and it worked See, look at that. And, and you know, not that you guys care, but I actually never decided to breastfeed. <laughs> so I, I helped you. You're welcome. Yeah, whatever. So what type of people buy from IROC Crafts and Confections? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Actually, I find that it's mostly women that because of what we sell, like when I do the sewing, most of the things I do are baby, like apron, baby aprons, bibs and burp cloths for babies. So they a lot of people buy them for baby showers. And also, I do aprons for children. So again, the, the mothers buy those. And even the woodwork, I find that most of the time, it's a woman buying a gift. Yeah. So, I mean, I also... We're the biggest yeah. buyers, of course. Oh, yeah. But we've had, we've had a couple of guys that have been repeat customers because they really like the work that he does. But overall, I'd say it's mostly the women who buy our, our items. And I think it's crazy, too, because you have, like... I'm not gonna call it like a cult following, but once somebody buys like a cake from you guys, they buy like every cake. Like my mom's having a birthday, my dad's having a birthday, my son's having my a girlfriend. birthday. Yeah, yeah, my cousin's baby sister's mama in law. Yeah, because exactly. actually I do have a customer like that. And it's like I've made her babies every every year of that baby's birth. I was like, wow, I am honored. Yeah. And now her friend just came on board and she was like, Yeah, I got something next month too. I was like, wow, they like my stuff. I don't know, <laughs> because it's good, it's quality, and I think that because you want people to be so happy from your products that you really put a lot of care into it and you make sure that you know these items are like perfect for them because i always ask for the weirdest things <laughs> you and your son yes you challenge me i made a roller coaster yeah roller coaster cake what is another crazy minecraft one? cake yeah. what i think the roller coaster was probably the most challenging the oh, race no. the race track wasn't that bad i asked you for the keg cake that had to look like a beer keg and it had to be like life size <laughs> I don't know how that cake made it. I did I did not know about structure and support at that time. Oh my gosh. I didn't think it would hold up, but it did. And I put fondant on that. It's, some of the things I, I look at that I've done, and I said, I don't know how I ever did that. I don't know if I could ever do that again. It was just me. And, well, I made a shoe too. What was it? A Converse? Yeah, you've made a purse. The Eiffel Tower one. Oh, Yes, gosh. that was so cool. And what was the one? Oh, I made on the Bible I made for Granny. Oh, yeah. Well, my husband helped me with that because he's an artist. So my grandma thought it was a real Bible. She tried to open, open it. it I was like, yes. Yes, it must look like a Bible. The box of um, like treats. What was it like? The, the candy, candy, like a box of candy. Yeah, yeah that's that so cool. Yeah. So yeah, lots of cool memories. <laughs> and I think that's what's kind of unique about your businesses. It's not just like a gift or you know like a quick sweet thing to you know get Thank to you. taste. It's more like a memory that you guys are making because people remember the cool cakes. So they're not Walmart quick frosting and a name like they are designed I remember you did like a ship because my husband was in the military he was yes. in the navy before um you did like yeah, the batman. watch oh, oh yeah yeah God. batman versus superman the um who's the guy with the the hands with the blades oh yeah um the x-man Wolverine. Wolverine oh my gosh sticking out yes 
Yeah, so she really does listen. Actually, I should say they because they do. I always ask for things that need extra sculpting <laughs> or like um, spray paint type stuff. And so, yeah, they work together to really make this thing that you've only imagined in your head. And when you see it, you're like, wow. <laughs> they, like, she doesn't, I don't think you still do. You don't put anything that's not edible on there, right? No, I do not. Yeah, so like, if you ask for flowers, those flowers are made out of things you can eat. So literally everything you just can throw in your mouth and enjoy. And everything tastes good. Yay. Yay. I don't have to give her that because I'm a picky eater. So I love that, you know, that is not just about the product because a lot of people go into business and they're just like mass producing, but everything is made to order. When it comes to all the baked items, I've tried to order things early. You can't. If your event is like, because she won't just say, when do you want it? When is the event? And whenever the event is, she will backtrack the date. And it's usually like, you have to get it like the day before or the yeah. day of. You can't yeah, get you it. Know, like, can mm -hmm. I get it in a couple days? Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you somewhere. That's right. <laughs> it's going to be fresh. By. It has to be fresh. You're not going to talk bad about me. I made it fresh. Mm -mm. Yeah. So it's really nice. And then, you know, even with the wood, we they do have some some items that you can just purchase that are ready made, but they do a lot of custom work so that whatever piece you get is something that you can pass on. It's already ready to mount on your wall. I remember I gave my mother-in-law a um, plaque for Christmas and it was, what was the one about the mom? No, uh, mom, but don't, don't, thou shalt not try me. Yes. Mom, 24. Yes, seven. thou shalt not try me. And it just, it, it definitely embodies what my mother-in-law is like as a mom. She had two sons. So it was like the perfect gift for her. And then I just got um, a couple months ago, the persistence one. I think it has like a um, scripture that goes through it. And yeah, it's just things that resonate with you that aren't just going to just sit and you're not going to care about and you're going to walk past. It's like, no, these things matter. Um, they bring joy and happiness. And I think that that's kind of what, you know, look, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm having yeah. fun. <laughs> I think that, you know, she's over here frosted. She's in her element. But I think that's what the business is about. So our tagline is we create happiness one craft at a time. <laughs> one craft at a time. One craft at a time. So that's I right. want to ask you though, because you've been in business for a while. But I know, because I've been in the background, that last year was definitely your best year. So this podcast is all about hurdles and, you know, knowing the real tea behind entrepreneurship. Not the Instagram, we doing great by our stuff, but the real behind the scenes stuff. So what are some of the hurdles that you've encountered in business? Me. <laughs> well, be real, be real. Me, yes. I, I, what is it? You were your biggest critic. And I just didn't feel I was good enough. To, to do what I wanted to do. I didn't have the confidence in myself and I wasn't pushing myself. And then I found somebody, <laughs> found, somebody. found somebody who who pushed me and challenged me. You use that if you want to straight through. The I just, I, I want to show you guys. Hers are all smooth and then mine are all clumpy. <laughs> oh, see that one you would use. I told me not to turn around, but I got it anyway. Yeah, for something like that, you would rake through it while it's oh. wet. But, you know, you chose to use what you wanted to use, so it will be. <laughs> Fine, I'm going to go with it. I started it's it. It's going to be what it's going to be, but this, you know, was what it could have been. Fine, but all right, it. I cut you off. Go ahead, your hurdles. But my hurdles, it was myself, and, and I realized that I didn't have all the answers. And, you know, my husband was encouraging to me, but, you know, you don't really listen to your spouse. They're supposed to say good things to you, about you. But then my coach, <laughs> you know, really started challenging me. And I told myself, okay, I'm going to listen this time. You know, all the other times, you know, I hear something, I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. But, but this year, I, I really felt I needed to make a difference because I wasn't working and I wasn't working my business. And I was getting a little bit miserable, getting a little fed up. So I knew something had to change. So I said I would listen. And when I listened and started making money. <laughs> mm, Want to do it? Yes. I said, okay, I'm going to listen some more. But that's what it was, is, is stepping outside of me and knowing that I needed some outside help. To, to guide me in the right direction and being open to it. Cause it doesn't matter what anybody tells you if you're not open to it. And I know that everything doesn't work for everybody, but I decided to go ahead and give it a try and, and see what I could do. And I was not disappointed. It's still a, a little hard sometimes to do things because I am such an introvert. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a little bit difficult, but you have to put yourself out there. And I was always afraid of being judged by people. You know, they, when we had our store, you, the people walk by and look in and they don't buy anything. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they hate me. But then I realized I shop the same way. You know, it's like everybody, you know, everybody, everything is not for everybody. Yeah, definitely. But you have to put yourself out there to be seen because if I'm not out there, I definitely won't make any sales. So it's just been about having more confidence in myself pretty much. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of business owners have that issue because especially introverted ones, like a lot of people like to do crafts and make products and things like that, but then they have to go and sell them. And that's what's hard because you have to actually put yourself out there and talk. <laughs> you have to let people touch and feel and ask the questions like, oh, well, would you take this for that? And you're yeah. like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Talking about there was a movie, well, Field of Dreams. He said, if you built it, they will come. I thought if I made it, they would buy. It was it was just gonna be that simple. Like and I don't need to it, do anything. Yeah, so, yeah, you have to. Like I remember when I told you, like, hey, you need to go live on social media, and you were like, excuse me, right? It's like, excuse me, I, I gotta do what? <laughs> and then the the video, you could see her push the play button, and then she tells herself like, oh, you can do it. <laughs> I was like, it's playing. It's actually going. <laughs> But you've come a long way since then, and I think that's that's a measure of success in itself to say, okay, this is where I started out, and now even though I'm making baby steps, now look at me. Like your social media is consistent. You go live every single Thursday. I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, you're on a podcast. <laughs> look at that. And I didn't give her a lot of rehearsal. I said, but I'm asking some questions. We're gonna we're gonna decorate some cookies. And she's doing it. So I think that, you know, that's great. And you're making money. That's, yes, that's really great. <laughs> you got to make it money. And, and I think that's that's the beauty. You can enjoy the ride and enjoy the growth because not everyone is really comfortable selling what they make, you know. And that's why some people are like, I just want to, you know, be in the back and, and make everything. I don't want to have to talk. And when once you get to a certain level, guess what? You can hire someone to sell things for you and you can sit back there and do what you love. But when you're in the very beginning, that ground floor of entrepreneurship, you have to be the salesperson, the tech person, the the maker, the crafter, the marketer, all the Everything. things, um, unless someone gifted you <laughs> some money. And it actually helps you, I think, because you learn the different parts of your business and you don't take it for granted and you know you know, what people's worth is when they come in and do the job for you. So you can focus on your your zone of genius. So I think that that's pretty awesome. Ooh, zone of genius. I, I like that. Yeah, zone of genius. I didn't make it up, but you can, you can tell people I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there anybody, because you you weren't naturally crafting and doing all the things <laughs> until, you, until you grew up a little bit. Um, so what is like somebody who influences you or somebody you follow that's like a crafter? Someone I follow, actually, I started with Crafty Gemini, and I liked her teaching style when I was doing a lot of the sewing. She, she had a very, a, a teaching style that spoke to me, because I always tell people, if I'm in a class or something, I need you to talk to me like I'm stupid. You know, don't, don't, you know, if I'm here to learn something, don't assume I already know it. And the way she just broke it down, I saw a, a tote bag. I was like, ooh, I can do this. Now, I still only do, you know, mostly squares and rectangles, but still, she <laughs> broke it down in a way to me that it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And then now there's, um, I always get her name mixed up, uh, Earth Child, Earthy Child. Because yeah. I always want to call her Crafty something because of Crafty Gemini. But actually, oh my gosh, we met her at a craft fair, I think when they were doing it in a park in Norfolk. And was that where I met her? Well, either way, it was at a craft event. And she was like, um, just go ahead and, you know, do it. Try it. And I was like, for real? <laughs> you know, like, I, can I do it? And she does a lot of crochet work. Oh, my gosh. She does such great crochet work. Yeah, I like her stuff. I got a um, scarf for my son one time from her. Oh, yeah. And that was really cool. She makes a lot of things out of, um, like, trash bags. Re recycled stuff. Like, recycled As a matter of fact, I just took her a bunch of trash bags. I mean, uh, the the Walmart bag because when you order your groceries online, they put everything in a separate bag. That is love. Okay. Love and broke. I was like, what? But see, what some of these this? you have to outline. Like this one oh, is the. So I'm not even gonna play myself like the that. Other, that. This one bad. is the awareness symbol, so you have to fill in some things, and that would be a travel coffee mug. But of course, you could do whatever you like with it. And this is, she said, "This is a truck." Can you guys see? It? It's nothing there. It's just a block. To well, it's a actually, I just went out and bought a lot. It's upside down. The coffee cups upside down. Okay. <laughs> I just actually went out and bought a lot of cookie, cookie cutters because I've really gotten into sugar cookies lately. And it's so crazy because I said I wasn't going to do them because I'm the type of person, I need instant gratification. I need it now. That's why I can't <laughs> bake bread. But sugar cookies take a while. You have to bake them. And then you have to, if you're going to lay down some, uh, the flood frosting on the background, you have to do that. Then you have to let, you have to wait like hours or a day. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my cookie's uh, not going to be ready. Is that why mine didn't do that? <laughs> well, it's not, well, because well, you used the wrong consistency in the wrong place, but this was wet on wet. So I had to, to decorate it. Like I said, then it had to, well, this one you didn't have to wait again because I did it while it was all wet. But if you want to add something else to it, you have to wait. 
And then you have to make sure that the icing is dry. It's hard enough if you have to pack it and send it somewhere. So it takes days yeah. to make sure the cookies. And then, you know, I just went through the struggle of finding the right recipe that will actually give me the, the points that I wanted. Because before, some of them, it's just a blob. I was like, that doesn't look like what it's supposed to. Like, this is supposed, this is going to be twin hearts. And you can tell it's twin hearts. Oh, really? So I finally, <laughs> once you decorate it, you're going to make it twin hearts. It's funny, look, she gets so excited when she's talking about baking. But I think that even what you're saying has, like, entrepreneurship in, in, involved in it because a lot of things you do have to wait for the gratification because a lot of people have to wait a while before they even get to see profit they have to wait a while before they make their first sale they have to wait a while before they nail down their logo their target audience mm -hmm. and so this is something you should learn from your cookies like you just gotta be patient like <laughs> wally patient. Yes. like wally He's like oh no i need this now but yes, i really got to into be it. patient and and just learn that you know everything worth having is worth you know, being patient for it because every opportunity is not your opportunity. You know, I recently learned that. I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Is it one of the books you had me read, I think? Maybe. Yeah, because I've been, I've been listening to, listening to a lot of books. Like audio books. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not I can't reader. read it. I'm not a reader, but I will listen to it. But I've been getting some good information about that. Like I said, yeah, you think it's your opportunity just because it's an opportunity. And you mad or discouraged. Right, but, but that one like, wasn't not, for you. Yeah, that exactly. one wasn't for you. So. It's not for you. So what is for you will, will be, be for, for you. you. Right. Nobody can take what's for you, you know, because I used to think that, oh, they they did what I was going to do. They stole my, you know, my opportunity. <laughs> stole like, my idea. Yeah. I was like, well, you know, that wasn't for you. So I'm, I'm learning to be okay with that. That that's what's good. for me is for me and nobody else. It's not for anybody else. That work. And that's, that's how you have to see things. Like things are going to happen for you in the right time when you're ready because sometimes you're not ready for the big opportunities yet. no no I just told my husband the other day I said I said it's funny that yeah God knows when you're ready when you're not because there was one I can't remember what I was asking for but I was like I'm ready I, I know I'm ready now I'm so ready give it to me give it to me and then much later when I got it I realized what it entailed I was like yeah I wasn't ready back then yeah. <laughs> I wasn't she ready. wasn't ready I thought I was but so yeah I learned patience yeah, mm -hmm. what's for you is for you. When it happens is when it was meant to happen. Because like I said, running into my coach, it was you. <laughs> you know, back when I first started, you weren't even doing this type of thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I was out there floundering all by myself. Boy, she was she was trying. She had a lot of the raw skills. She just she had the did. bones. Yeah, you had the bones. No meat. Needed some meat. No meat yeah. on those. So luckily I found you. Oh, thank you. Yes, and I rock marketing business, business solutions. solutions. Yes, ma'am. Where did yeah. I rock come from? <laughs> first of all it's my podcast she asked me questions now did y'all see that no so yeah that's something i did not talk about so my company is i rock marketable business solutions and your company is i rock crafts and creations and that's because oh yeah sorry oh you always make confections fun. and it's because and what? it's because i'm amazing and my name is Corey, and Corey is spelled backwards is i rock and then of and, course i rock and so. who who had it first doesn't matter that's that's that is <laughs> that's water under the bridge the point is is that that i rock she rocks and we all, we all rock, rock. Yeah, that's, we all that's rock. what matters but i rock first all right we're gonna get you back on target she'll <laughs> we'll be here all day because she just wants to decorate these cookies okay so i do want to ask you what was like your biggest like hoorah i did it you felt really good about yourself for 2020 like in business, what was your like yay. 2020? 2020 last year because it was a, it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, what was your big like? I got, I did that. That's a good question. What was my big? I guess it was in spite of the pandemic, I was getting customers because people would mess me like, "Are you still making stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah," and and like I said, that was my that was my biggest year for for revenue and it really shocked me that people were still well people still celebrate anyway even if it's not as big as it used to be i didn't do any wedding cakes this year because mm -hmm. i had some wedding schedule but yeah so but yeah that people were still coming to me to get what they needed and referring me out so like i said we we did very well this year in spite of the pandemic I hate to tell you, but we're in 2021 now. She said this year. Oh, last, last year. year. <laughs> last year, last but she's year. She's speaking forever. into existence. She's like, this year. This, oh, well, this year, yeah. This year is going to be even better. But last year, when I was learning what I was supposed to do, it was the best year for us financially. Yeah, I told people, I was like, oddly, you know, and I don't know if it was consistent, all, you know, in different industries, but most of my clients had pretty stellar years last year, even with COVID. 
Um, and I think it's just to speak to like the mindset of everyone that was involved. And it was just that, you know, idea of like, we're going to get through this. We're going to stay positive. What else can we do? How can we pivot our marketing? How can we pivot what we're selling, where we're selling, who we're selling to, so that we can still have a triumphant year? Yeah, I found that too, that some people are just changing the way they do things. Like we didn't get to go to any vending events, yeah. but we still posted things and like I said, word of mouth, stuff like that. So it was just trying to find another way to maneuver in the given situation. And I think that's a good tip. So I'm going to ask you, because most of my audience are new entrepreneurs or people thinking about jumping into entrepreneurship. What is one tip you would have for someone who is just getting started? Don't overwhelm yourself, I would think. I would say you can't do everything, which is what I was trying to do before. It's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. What do you say? If you chase, what is it? I don't know what it is. If you chase three sheep or something, you're not going to catch any of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been hearing that a lot too. And that's what I was doing. I was chasing after everything at the same time. I was like, oh, I'm super excited. I can do this, do that, and the other. And, and so I fell down in some areas. So definitely narrow it down in the beginning. You can always scale up, but don't don't overwhelm yourself yeah sometimes you have to take things a little bit by little because mm -hmm. um, i know when i talk to people about goal setting i'm saying okay here this is the formula and i'm going to give you an opportunity to you know make eight goals but you might not want to do all eight at once because if you do you may feel overwhelmed same thing with business if you want to start a business start with your fundamentals make sure that foundation is taken care of and then expand it and then do more and then outsource and then you know hire some extra help or what have you and you'll feel a lot less stressed it's mm -hmm. really um i think human nature to just want to do it all and say nope i'm gonna launch in 30 days i love seeing those like click funnels like launch in 30 days that is 30 days after you've done all the legality things, taking care of that. That's 30 days after you've already decided what products and services you're going to make. 30 days after you've already engaged with your audience. You know, there's just so much to do before just launching a product. There's so much to think about and just, you know, finding out if, what products your audience needs. So many people try to say, well, I'm going to make this or I'm going to do this. And you're like, but do your audience want it? Do they need it? Because yeah. the point of an entrepreneur <laughs> is to solve the problem. You said that to me. Does anybody want that? Yeah. Like, oh, but I want to make it. Okay. But, you know, that's like making a xylophone cover. Like how many people, you know, got xylophone? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you well, might think about that. You might be surprised at how many people have an accordion. Well, that's true. But yeah. you don't make anything with the accordion. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's a fact. Oh, well, I, she's trying to put in a fact. But no, well, yeah, there's somebody came to one of my classes that I was attending and he played in the accordion. Random fact of the day, guys. Random fact of the day. Glad to find that for you. But yes, that's why she doesn't do too many podcasts. She's a random factor. She <laughs> plays some Jeopardy. But yeah, so I think, yeah, it's a great tip to have is, like you said, just kind of take it one step at a time, come up with a plan and follow it. All right, so I always allow anyone who comes on my podcast to decide to, you know, show their feathers, tell everybody what they got, <laughs> what they have, you know, as far as products and services. So this is your time to shine. Oh, really? Yes. So what do you sell? Stuff. <laughs> she said stuff. stuff. Okay, so ma'am, what <laughs> can I purchase from you? What could anybody purchase from you? Cakes. I do wedding cakes, birthday cakes, Special baby shower, egg cakes, housewarming, divorce, Ooh, whatever, man, whatever, you, whatever you whatever you want to celebrate. Okay. But I, I haven't done any any pornographic. I can tell her there. You better get out there. I know. I just, some I just cakes. no, I cannot. But I made that baby bump cake for you and and i was really it was uncomfortable nine with that. years ago because <laughs> i said you i'll make it i'll make it but you cannot cut it in front of me i just i don't want to see that but but i'll make just about all kinds of different cakes i love making cakes and cupcakes oh my gosh i love making cupcakes and she makes cookies and other desserts because you do like pies sweet potato pie pumpkin pie pecan pie whatever pies and then um what are those things those those old school what was a rum cake? Uh, old school, really? It's a rum cake. It's a rum cake. It's a rum cake. Thick cakes. You catch any little milk with to wash them down. Them thick cakes. Really? Pound cake? Yes, I don't like pound cake. <sighs> pound cakes, rum cakes, but you do like my coffee cake. Yeah, I do like the coffee cake. And the blueberry. Because it's like the blueberry coffee cake. I don't think you had the blueberry coffee cake. Oh yeah, that's good too. But I do like the coffee cake, and and I don't eat pies, so I don't. But my son does my like sweet them. potato pie is the best. Okay. And I tell my mama, mine is better than hers. <laughs> and Patty's is better than Patty's. 
So yeah, so cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies. Um, you do like all kind of cookies. Oatmeal, oh, yeah, oatmeal lemon, raisin. I don't even sugar. eat. I don't really eat raisins, but I eat my oatmeal raisin cookie because it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so all kind of sweets, home, homes, like, what is it, like the Southern style, I, I would call it, just very homey, something you want to just nuzzle up with your family and chit chat and eat. Um, and then, of course, you have your sewing products. So what do you have for those types of things? For sewing, I have my baby bib and burp cloths. I also have aprons for children. And not sewing, but I have my, my dog chew toys seem to be a hit as well. And you got your garment protectors. Those are great for for some of us messy people. Like the time when you wouldn't wear it and then you spilled something on yourself before you were being a presenter? I was, yes, I was a presenter at an event and I, I was dressed beautifully and somebody decided to pass a cookie to someone else across me and drop the cookie in my lap. So <laughs> had yeah. you had your garment protector or on? Or had they not passed the cookie yeah. between between them? But, but I wear mine in the car when I'm, when I'm running late for work and yeah. I need to eat my breakfast while I'm driving, I put my garment protector on. It's, it's very, I'm about like practical things. So I think it's very practical to use now I know <laughs> now I know. know I even wore one on my wedding day when I was in my wedding dress at my at my wet at my reception while I was eating I had it was cute you had like queen king, on it king, 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 king and then my son had what I said prince because we were like all white so we didn't want to get dirty um and then of course woodwork we can't forget about that what type of woodwork do you sell well he makes signs uh that what pretty much whatever you want like I said he does the motivational signs he's got some with scriptures on them like walk by faith not by sight different kinds of things like that and it's just the ones that he makes on his own are usually pretty more inspirational yeah but we do some you know custom for you like like we've done a few with like when you get married and like the you know the, the smiths established january 1st 2010 his and hers. yeah so things like that so it's, it's pretty much all kinds of little signs that you would hang up anywhere in your house or in your office to say whatever it is you want to say. Yeah, I love the ones that are like, home is where the Navy sends us, or home is where the Coast Guard sends us. People look, I guess it's the we, Army. Yeah, well, the Army, there she goes. But and then, yeah, yes, like so people. that, yeah, so, so he made a sign that says, home is where the Army sends us, and then he made the sign for all of the station, all the places that I've been stationed, yeah. and just added them on. I was like, oh, that is so cute. So, yeah, stuff like that, it's very personalized for you because it's about the memory that's right so where can people connect with you right here <laughs> look she's like come find me come in the house, house, in my my house. <laughs> no we are on facebook at i rock crafts and confections we are also on instagram yes we're gonna try to push her to get on more platforms but that was a feat guys so facebook and instagram you can actually order straight um to them they also have a, a email address that's what I rock. I rock dot crafts at gmail.com. And I rock is spelled I R O C. So I rock dot crafts at gmail.com. And she would shoot you a, a order form, or you can call because custom orders. I like to draw pictures, guys. Your son does too. <laughs> yes, draw pictures, and I, I, I show her where I want things and what flavors. Like your wedding cake? Yes. What was it? Four tiers, two or three different. Like it was a lot. I had different it flavors. Lot. It was a lot. It was big. It was, it was way too big. It. You enjoyed it. Was way too big. It wasn't. It, we enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> but yes, so thank you, Mom. But we made cookies. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see them, but. That's not a coffee cup. I thought it was like strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, hold on, let me come closer to the screen because they got to see my creation. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I know, it. the lights. The lights. It's more like a milkshake. Okay, fine. My milkshake brings the other boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> don't try to be like she ratchet just like everybody else but yeah oh, you your, about me. your cookies look way better than mine hers are all smooth the outline because i use the flow icing to make my and it even appears on the why can't mine look it don't mine don't look okay. because it likes me it likes me <laughs> but anyway well thank you for being on the podcast the the the, the one and only i rock podcast right. thank you um, and guys, definitely check out all of her baked items. She actually ships, well, not the baked items, but oh, the cookie, sewn cookies. Oh, cookies. I, I'll okay, ship, so but cookies. no cakes and pies. Yeah, so cookies, all the sewn items, and, and the, wood. the wood items can be shipped nationwide. Any of the really good baked ones, you're going to have to come here. 
local. <laughs> local. Look, you might be able to squeeze in a North Carolina, because we're in Virginia, maybe in North Carolina, maybe in Maryland, if you pick it up, and it's there, your event is that day, because <laughs> she's not going <laughs> to give it to you early. <laughs> but definitely, um, definitely check her out um, on her social media, definitely. Um, I write crafts and confections, because she has really cool stuff that are really going to bring you and your family together. They will solve any rift in the family. <laughs> Anything can be solved over cake. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so definitely check it out. And guys, just remember, I rock, she rocks, we, we all, all rock. rock. See you next time.